You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is. I think this ranks up there with uh, favorites in terms of like hymns and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I think when probably we, to, like an actual top five list, yes, not like we, my favorite hymns top five list. That's really like a hundred. When we <laughs> <laughs> when we get to meet the missionaries in person and uh, right here in the studio, it's always great when um, when our missionaries are home on reconnect and mm-hmm. we get time to visit with them in the studio and share their story with you. And in studio today, Mark and Megan Mantai, who are serving the Lord in Uganda, spending some time with us here on the Coffee Hour. Mark, Megan, so great to have you in studio. Thanks so much for being our guest this morning. Thank you for having us. So when you, when did you begin thinking about uh, serving on an international mission? When did that start you know, making its way into your, your minds and your hearts? Our stories are totally different. So for <laughs> me, it was when I was a little girl and had missionaries come to my church and would share. And I thought one day I want to do that. Um, but I was very happy where the Lord planted me. I was in D.C. ministry for 17 years in congregations, so I was happy doing that. And then the opportunity came to be in 2016. That's my story. I worked with my uh, my family for 20 years in our family business, and uh, my dad just retired after 50 years of mm-hmm. uh, that same work. And I really thought that for my whole life I would do the same thing that he did. And um, we worked together for 20 years, and then... Um, uh, about 15, uh, there came a, a shift and a, a chance to do something different. And um, I, I want to encourage everyone to pray that prayer that I did, use me. The thing that I didn't know was I was going to be used in Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <Surprise>. yeah, <laughs> Megan always wanted to be a missionary. And so uh, when thinking about what are we going to do, what, what should we do to serve, uh, how can we show God's face to others in, through vocation, as le- as a layperson, I have a beard, but I'm not a pastor. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, we we she had the cur- the courage to send in that application, and God's plan uh, just started from there. Like when you think about it, everything you've done in your life up to a certain point has been part of that plan where you're being prepared for something. So through my uh, business experience and uh, schooling, I'm able to serve in Uganda and use this gift as a controller of a seminary, uh, and also uh, in evangelism uh, and encouragement for the people there in the local church. What was your reaction when you found out you were going to Uganda? Well, we had two <laughs> options. It was Uganda or Uganda. So we were like, <laughs> Sweet. Go yeah, Uganda. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a, a different role in that. And I think we were surprised, shocked, and in awe. Um, but also grateful for the opportunity. So, and every day it's it's always different, um, but we wake up with joy and purpose. Like, yeah, we get to do this. We get to walk alongside this church body and partner together. And there's nothing like that. So Mark, you shared that your experience, you, your business experience has been very helpful in that you get to serve at the seminary and serving in that way. Megan, tell us about how you serve in Uganda. Yes, I serve as an instructor at the seminary there in Christian education and counseling. So I use my background as a DCE, and I'm also a mental health counselor. Mm. So I help train the people to prepare for ministry in that way. So the the pastors that I get to work with, they do the great job of indoctrinating them in the doctrine and theology, and I get to do more of the how to do a lesson plan, um, how to care for someone that's hurting. So it's a it's a great combination. Education and counseling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, can you That's feel really the good. cosmic shift when two DCEs are Yeah, it's a little the, weird. That side of the studio is a little, <laughs> yeah, a little crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we even had to ask Mark if he was okay being in the room with well, this usually, many DCEs usually one I'm day. Not that's word, it. But, yeah. Sorry, that's got, a DCE a joke. Here today. Um, so <laughs> Both involved at, at the seminary um, and, and serving at the seminary, but you also mentioned serving in the local congregation, too. Tell us mm-hmm. a little bit about that. Yeah, we get to serve alongside them. It's a great gift to be able to be their partner and their colleague. And what it means to be a colleague in the local language, it's about the same as being a family member. So you are important, you're included, you're involved. So they don't just call us their missionaries, but their colleagues. Mm. So we get to go with them in the field and we help do door-to-door ministry and evangelism. We help do training workshops when appropriate. We've done radio evangelism and supporting the pastors in their work in that way. 
Uh, Mark has helped organize missionaries and gone to refugee camps and helped organize some teaching um, opportunities there. So we're just able to really jump in when appropriate and however the church can use us when we're not in our main roles at the seminary. I'm curious about this radio evangelism. <laughs> How did that come about? What, what do you get to do? Well, the pastor that does it in his area um, in Uganda, radio evangelism is very effective mm -hmm. and they work with um, Lutheran Hour Ministry a lot. And so that's a great way to get the people mm -hmm. um, because they hear it and they listen and they want to go and connect in that way. So we got to go in um, one of the village radio stations at like 6 a.m. on a <laughs> Sunday and um, we helped give a message of encouragement um, to the people there, and then the local pastor translated it before he gave his sermon. So it was a great opportunity, and then people were calling in, and they wanted to talk to those people on the radio. Who are those people? They're not <laughs> from around here. Um, so it was a great way to connect and and help the church be visible in that moment. Yeah. What's the the uh, cultural transition been like, and, and have you learned a new language? And ye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we will always be learning a language. There's over 40 <laughs> tribal languages in Uganda, oh, and uh, so it's really important that the uh, the men and women that are serving there serve where they're from because they can really minister to people in their heart language. So Megan is better at Lusoga, our local mm -hmm. language, than I am. But uh, to be honest, as long as we're serving there, I, I can't see not going to language learning because you learn so much about a culture. Uh, by studying their language. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's true. What are some of the other things you've learned about the culture in addition to language? Uganda is the most friendly place, and I'll, I'll um, have a discussion with anyone that doesn't think that that's true, but um, <laughs> it's the most welcoming and friendly place. Ugandans always want to make you feel that you're a part of them, and they will do anything. They'll go above and beyond to make you feel welcomed in their country. And that is if you're there for one day, one week, if you live there, um, there's just a great sense of hospitality there. Um, there's freedom to be able to grow together and ask questions and discover things. They're very patient with us um, as we're navigating that. Um, when we first lived there, um, I was able to learn how to be a Musoga lady, which is the tribe where we live. And so I learned how to cook the bananas and the banana leaves and how to peel the potatoes and dice in my hand and not have a cutting board and doing the laundry by hand. Um, so just learning how people function and live in day to day so that I can best know how to minister to them and, um, and teach them and encourage them and be a part of their community. Knife in my I hand. Would say, I would I, not. I would. I would not have hands. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have too many fingers left. For onions, you turn your head because they're the strongest onions in the world. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Wow. So <laughs> that leads uh, leads us to my the favorite question. The, my, <laughs> it's my favorite missionary question: the food uh, and 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 learning. Um, so favorite food, food that's been um, maybe a very popular food that's been difficult to interesting experience. Yeah, has been an interesting experience. Uh, who wants to chime in on that one? Well, over at the seminary, we do have sixteen acres of farm ground. Wow. So during that's this cool. uh, during this reconnect, I have had the pleasure of talking to some professional farmers, mm. and they're always interested in how do you do that over there. So our main crops uh, that we grow at the seminary are corn, uh, beans, and potatoes. So the main meal we serve at the seminary is a uh, ground up corn uh, product like mashed potatoes, and that's the the base. And then uh, beans cooked all day into a soup. And so that goes on the top. So it's beans and posho. Now that's the main meal. And then uh, two days a week we do have beef. So we add beef with that, that mixture. So that's kind of a staple food in the region that we live in. A fun food, though, is called a Rolex, not the watch. <laughs> but it's called a Rolex, <laughs> and it's a chapati, which is a little bit thicker than a tortilla. And then it's an omelet, mm. and you put that together, and you roll it up, rolled eggs, Rolex, mm. and you eat it. Some might call it a breakfast burrito on the side of the ocean, <laughs> um, but you can get it on the street, and you can see them making it, and they chop up vegetables and put it in there, and it's like Uganda's fast food. Mm. That sounds I'm hungry amazing. now. <laughs> Second breakfast time. Um, so you talked a little bit about the people that you were able to minister to. Who have you uh, been able to befriend or who have you met who's been walking alongside you in, in this journey? 
we work the most with the local church body, so the Lutheran Church of Uganda. And so those are the people that are our colleagues and our friends. So um, from the bishop to the deans or what we call the district presidents, um, the instructors at the seminary, local church body members, those are the people that we're closest to. And as well as our local colleagues, we have another LCMS missionary, Rachel Meyer, that's there as well. Um, so those are the people that we interact with the most. Now, this guy to my left, Mark, um, he is great with getting to know people in the town and knowing the names of the post office person and the parking ticket people there. you got to par- <laughs> Parking tickets aren't bad. It's what you get to be able to park in a space. But he knows about their kids, uh, the butcher, their favorite soccer teams. He's the guy that has all that information. So he's, <laughs> he's, good, he's good at building those relationships. <laughs> we have just about a, a minute left. Um, are you traveling while you're here? Are you here in the United States for a little bit? Uh, give us a, a heads up where you're going to be and how we can pray for you this year in the next minute. So we've been to 14 states. We're near the end wow. of our home service. We're getting ready to go to Western Montana in February. That'll be yeah. fun. <laughs> so pray for us for safe travel. Um, we will go back to Uganda at the end of February. So our ongoing prayer is um, just for that encouragement that we'll be able to best share the love of Christ um, and that peace and that joy that comes from being a missionary and that we can best reach the people that we're walking alongside. That won't be a drastic change no, in no, no, climate. No. <laughs> Western Montana, you said? Yeah. February? Yes. Just winter. And then back to Uganda. Yes. <laughs> and what are the temps like in Uganda around this time of year? Pretty warm. Yeah. Uh, February is about the hottest time they have. We have two <laughs> rainy seasons and two dry seasons. So this is, we're coming out of a dry season. And then it's when that first rain comes in the middle of March, maybe, that we're going to rush to plant. And then, uh, you know, just by August or so, we'll be able to harvest. Wow. Mark and Megan Manti serving the Lord in Uganda. Thank you so much for being our guest on the coffee hour this morning. And I know you have a lot of meetings and things to do while you're here for mm-hmm. Reconnect. So we really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk with you and share your story today. Thank you for having you. us. That's us for the coffee hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.